Hello and welcome to another 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, some news. Thanks, Doug. Welcome everyone to an extra long, extra special episode of 7 Days of Science. The reason it's extra long and extra special is that Doug and Ben have sent me an interview they did with Alia Norduamel, a PhD student working at the University of Witwatersrand with Dr. Julian Benoit, who organised the trip to South Africa that Ben and Doug are on. This is because she is the lead author of a recently published paper on Biamasukians, focusing on their growth and development as they age. But first, let's quickly get through the other news this week. First up, some big bird fossils out of Argentina. Argentina. Four new teraton specimens have been examined in Argentina. One of the four specimens was found between the 1930s and 1950s and was originally reported as being the remains of a condor. These fossils, when examined, have been determined to show just enough divergent features to perhaps be classed as new species. However, after more study it could be found that they do not, and are therefore most likely fossils of the species Teratornis meriami. The new study also sheds light on the feeding behaviour of pteratorn birds. Previously, it was believed that they were vulture-like, being scavengers or raptorial-like hunters due to the presence of a strong hooked beak. However, the new study shows that they had relatively weak legs and claws, alongside quite a weak jaw. So it's now suggested they might have been piscivores, catching fish and swallowing them whole, without the need for powerful jaws and claws to rip flesh and bone. Next up, a new theropod from Brazil. 70 million years old, this new theropod has been dubbed Curupi etata. It was discovered in the western part of Sao Paulo state and measures around 5 metres long. There were very few remains of the new species with only three cordial vertebrae and a bit of pelvic girdle. Mostly, what this discovery indicates is more diversity within the area 17 million years ago. But other than that, there is not much more to say. But I'm sure more of this dinosaur will hopefully be found in the future to help us piece it together. Now on to the interview with Alia Noduamel. I could try and go through her new paper, but to be honest, I think she explains the key parts of it better than me. Thank you, Ollie. So I've come to South Africa to interview the author of this paper. Let's go meet her. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, I'm Alia Noor, a PhD candidate in, at the ESI in South Africa. I'll be your guide today. Fantastic. Do you live here? Uh, no. So, firstly, what is a Biamasukian? So, Biamasukians are a group of tetrapods who lived about like 250 million years ago and are nowadays found mainly in Russia and Southern Africa. They are very basal therapsids. Therapsids is a group of synapsids that lived into Permian to Triassic area and they are considered to be the nowadays relative of mammals. We also call them mammal like reptiles. And among those therapsids, there's a group called Biamosuchia, which is at the base of the phylogenetic tree of the, the therapsid group. Back in the time, in the 60s, Biamosuchia were considered to be relative of more famous Gorgonopsians, like Gorgonops. But those kinds of studies are now outdated, and we think that those Biamosuchia and the Gorgonopsia are two different groups. Among the Biamosuchia, there's two groups. We we'll call them like the Burnetia morpha, those who grow bosses on the skulls, and there is the more basal Biamosuchia, which has Hipposaurus or Biamosuchus, that do not grow bosses on their skull. So what material uh, are they known from? What material? So this is very difficult for us to study the material coming from Biamosuchian specimens because they are very rare into the fossil record. At that time of living, there were carnivorous animals, so there's obviously less carnivores than herbivores, so there's less fossilized carnivore into the fossil record. And they're really, really rare to find into the fossil record. There's about like maybe 100 specimens among the world, including those coming from Russia and Southern Africa. But, um, and it's mainly, apart from Biamosuchus and Hipposaurus, Biamosuchus is, from, is mainly in Russia and Hipposaurus is in South Africa, uh, those two have complete skeleton that we have found, so we know how they look like and everything, but for all of the species and genders of Biamosuchians, there's only the skull that have been found. 
And the problem with that clade, that group, is that most of the um, genders of those animals are monospecific, which is if it's only one species representing the gender, and among that, there's only one specimen representing the species. So we have only one skull for a monospecific gender, which is very complicated for us to do any kind of studies based on statistics or ontogeny. So this study focuses on the growth of these animals. Uh, what parts of the skulls uh, tells you about the growth? Okay, so um, what's the difference between a juvenile and an adult? So juvenile specimens, among the Burnetia morph, so those who grow bosses on the skulls, juvenile specimens do not show any kind of growing of bosses on their eyes or their nose. In contradiction to adult specimens who have very big bosses on top of their orbit, there sometimes there's also a ridge on the nose, and they have big bosses also and thick bones on the back around the temporal fenestra, which is there. Yeah. And those juvenile specimens, they do not show any kind of bosses or thickness around the temporal fenestra, around the back of the skulls or on the top of the orbit. And one of the things that we found, which might not be related to ontogeny, it might be something else, but we found that all juvenile spermosuchians, they had two canines on each side of the skulls, which means there's one canine that is working, and there's another canine, sometimes two, who is a replacement canine. So this is a kind of replacement pattern that for now we haven't observed on adult specimens. But on other therapsid clades, those kinds of pattern of replacement of the canine is also found on big skulls and on adult specimens, especially in pterocephalians, a group called Lycosuchids, and some Gorgonopsians. So that thing, so that pattern of replacement of the canine, that might be more related to either ontogeny or might be something like related to specific species. It is also likely that we found that kind of replacement of the teeth in also on Piermosuchians, but that's studies to come. Which is normal, because we think that those animals, they were replacing their teeth through their life. So they wouldn't stop the replacement of the teeth when they reach the adult stage, like humans. The replacement of their teeth is more like a crocodile type than a mammal type. Another thing, we found out that those Biarmosuchians, baby Biarmosuchians, they had a bone called the parietal, which is around the pineal foramen here at the back of the skull. Um, on human, it's the bone which is behind our skull. There. And this parietal is usually one bone, one completed ossified bone, but on those baby Biarmosuchians, the parietal was either divided into four or six pieces which means we can see on the scans that there was still center of ossification inside that parietal, which means that bones haven't complete its ossification yet when the animal died. Um, it's something that, it's a feature that we didn't observe really in current species, but it was also found into Piermosuchians small Piermosuchian specimen, maybe juveniles, that were found recently in Zambia. And there's a study, histological studies of uh, Zoe Kulik and a collaborator from the United States, where they cut the skulls into very thin slices, and they observed that some of the very small uh, Biamosuchian specimen had an extra suture inside the parietal, which means the parietal was divided into a few pieces. So this is how we related that maybe that parietal never finished its ossification and it might be related to a juvenile condition. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Um, brilliant talking to you. I've, um, I'll, I'll go home then. See you guys in a minute. Cheers.
And now over to our fan favourite section, where Alex covers the latest business news. <sighs> Look, I don't want to do this if you're just going to cut me off. Thank you, Alex. Well, that's it from us this week. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you soon.